program, everybody from the edge of America. I'm Rick Amato. How do you feel about that, America? One of the architects of Obamacare, an MIT professor by the name of Jonathan Gruber, giggles and says that you and I are stupid. He says that the president's signature health care law was purposely written in a confusing way so that it could be passed into law. He said that they, those who created Obamacare, strategically exploited the stupidity of the American voter. After getting caught on tape saying that, he then goes on to MSNBC, where else, and says he was just speaking off the cuff. But then three additional videos surface of him saying the exact same thing. Hey, he knows a thing or two about stupidity. Let's take a look at this video montage of Jonathan Gruber. Call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. Do you stand by the comments in that video? Um, the comment in the video were made at an academic conference. I was speeding off, speaking off the cuff. And, and I, other messages, he wrote John Perry, from were like more likely staff, came up with a great substitute idea. They said, look, what you and economics nerds want to do is you want to say that for people who expensive health insurance plans, they will no longer get a 40% tax break. What if we instead just levied a 40% tax on the insurance companies that sell these terrible, expensive Cadillac plans? We said, well, that's pretty much the same thing. But why does it matter? Said, You'll see. And they were both in that past. The American voter is too stupid to understand the difference. So basically, it's the same thing. We just tax the insurance companies. They pass it on higher prices. That offsets the tax break we get. It ends up being the same thing. It's a very clever, you know, basically exploitation of the, of the, of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter. The political fall fallout on this should be fascinating to watch. House Minority, Leader, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi says she has no idea who this Jonathan Gruber guy even is. She said she never heard of him. Then watch this video of Nancy Pelosi, which surfaced. I don't know who he is. He didn't help write our bill. And so, with all due respect to your question, you have a person who wasn't writing our bill commenting on what was going on when we were writing the bill. Our bill brings down rates. I don't know if you have seen Jonathan Gruber of MIT's analysis of the, uh, what the comparison is to the status quo versus what will happen in our bill for those who seek insurance within the exchange. As I said, the political consequences on this for Democrats are far from over. But the American people do not care about the politics of it. They are sick and tired of the politics of it, be it Republican or Democrat. They only want something that works for them in their own personal lives and that of their families. And joining me this time to break it all down from Washington, D.C., is health care expert from the National Center for Public Policy Research, David Hoberg. David, welcome back to the show. Well, thanks for having me. David, first of all, your reaction to the Gruber videos. Well, uh, for start, my first thought was, well, you know, given the, the reaction of the American people to Obamacare, even when it was being debated, I kind of get the sense that they're not uh, that they're not they're not that stupid. In fact, they're smart enough to realize that Gruber and his ilk were, were trying to pee on their legs and, and convince them that it was raining. Um, but it doesn't particularly surprise me that you know liberal intellectuals are going to think that the the American people are stupid. That's always been kind of their vision of um, of the United States of the American people that they're stupid and they don't know what's best for them for themselves and they need to be guided by people right. like. Gruber. I agree. Uh, the problem I have with that, the, the problem I have with that is I think, you know, people who make, make the decisions should be the ones who pay the cost for getting the decision wrong. Uh, when it comes to health insurance, the consumer who buys the health insurance should get to decide what health insurance he wants. When you start leaving the decisions up to people like Gruber, Congress, and so forth, you're shifting the decisions over to people who pay almost no cost for being wrong. And I can think of a no more stupid or dangerous way of, of making decisions. Um, so, and I think you're, you know, you're actually seeing the, the, the results of that now reflected in the, the results of Obamacare. 
All right, now, David Hogberg, as I said in a monologue, people people are tired of the politics of it. I, I can sit here this this evening and talk about how Jonathan Gruber did this and, and the architects of Obamacare lied to the American people and thought the American people were stupid. At the end of the day, the American people don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. Big picture, both parties lied. You're the health care expert. In three sentences, David Hogberg, name three things which can be done to improve our health care system as it stands today without part in politics? Um, well, three things that could be done is you could uh, pass a sort of flat, um, uh, refundable tax credit that people could buy insurance with. Uh, you could let um, people with employer-based insurance put their money into a large health savings account for the purchase of insurance, which would make it portable. And I think another thing you could do is, is have uh, people be able to buy insurance out of state. I think all those things would increase competition, make consumers more price conscious, and of course something does have to be done about uh, um, pre-existing conditions, but that can be done without ruining the, the health care system like you know, Obamacare is on track to do. All right, David Hopper, thank you for that distinct answer and precise response. Now, David, how many, pol how many individual policyholders have lost their plans in a marketplace uh, under, since, since Obamacare has come into law? Well, um, it's somewhere between four and six million last year, and that's that's probably closer to six million. And so far, there's been an additional three hundred and fifty thousand this year. So, um, you know, the president's plan that if you like it, you can keep your plan um, was, uh, you know, it, 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 that promise was was clearly a lie. And frankly, they they knew it was a lie back in two thousand ten. A report by the Department of Labor and Health and Human Services came out in the middle of that year and said, look. Look, you know, based on the changes uh, that have previously been made in, in health and in, uh, health insurance plans, a lot of people are going to lose them uh, with these with these new regulations. And the president kept making that promise. So, uh, you know, it, it's just more of this sort of uh, deceit that you know, and and uh, thinking the people are stupid. That, right. Uh, we've seen David. You know, let me more, ask you most recently in, in in Jonathan Gruber. Let me ask you, David. You know, I've been trying to stay from the pol away from the politics of it. Now I'm going to bring the politics in. Now that Gruber has brought all this attention, and we see the White House trying to get away from him. We see Nancy Pelosi lying, saying, I don't know the guy. Then we see her video saying that she quoted him. Do Gruber's comments and the unwanted attention he brought to Obamacare, what, if anything, does that mean for the future of Obamacare the next two, three years leading up to 2016 and perhaps after? Um, you know, I, I don't know. It depends really on how many legs this story has. I mean, there's just been another uh, Gruber video that's just recently surfaced uh, with him saying that an objection to a single payer uh, system was, you know, was that written by my adolescent children? Um, but I, I really think but what's really going to drive um, opposition to Obamacare and eventually, you know, free market reforms is the failure of Obamacare. And I think you're going to continue to see that play out over the next two to three years. All right, David Oberg, uh, health care expert from the National Center for Public Policy Research. Thank you for joining us. So who will be 